Hi everybody, welcome back to the Here to See channel. Have another Here Journal for you. Leviticus chapter 7 after the exodus from Egypt. The Here to See channel always focuses on sharing pearls of wisdom, nuggets of knowledge, understanding the difficult, and instructions for a better life. We're reading through the entire book of Leviticus, a chapter at a time, and doing a Here Journal on each chapter. Here journaling is a method that many find edifying to their personal relationship with the Lord. Check out replicate.org to learn more about here journaling. But now, let's read and listen to Leviticus chapter 7 in the New Living Translation from the YouVersion Bible app, and then I'll share my here journal with you. Chapter 7, Further Instructions for the Guilt Offering these are the instructions for the guilt offering. It is most holy. The animal sacrificed as a guilt offering must be slaughtered at the place where the burnt offerings are slaughtered, and its blood must be splattered against all sides of the altar. The priest will then offer all its fat on the altar, including the fat of the broad tail, the fat around the internal organs, the two kidneys, and the fat around them near the loins, and the long lobe of the liver. These are to be removed with the kidneys, and the priests will burn them on the altar as a special gift presented to the Lord. This is the guilt offering. Any male from a priest's family may eat the meat. It must be eaten in a sacred place, for it is most holy. The same instructions apply to both the guilt offering and the sin offering. Both belong to the priest who uses them to purify someone, making that person right with the Lord. In the case of the burnt offering, the priest may keep the hide of the sacrificed animal. Any grain offering that has been baked in an oven, prepared in a pan, or cooked on a griddle belongs to the priest who presents it. All other grain offerings, whether made of dry flour or flour moistened with olive oil, are to be shared equally among all the priests, the descendants of Aaron. Further Instructions for the Peace Offering These are the instructions regarding the different kinds of peace offerings that may be presented to the Lord. If you present your peace offering as an expression of thanksgiving, the usual animal sacrifice must be accompanied by various kinds of bread made without yeast, thin cakes mixed with olive oil, wafers spread with oil, and cakes made of choice flour mixed with olive oil. This peace offering of thanksgiving must also be accompanied by loaves of bread made with yeast. One of each kind of bread must be presented as a gift to the Lord. It will then belong to the priest who splatters the blood of the peace offering against the altar. The meat of the peace offering of thanksgiving must be eaten on the same day it is offered. None of it may be saved for the next morning. If you bring an offering to fulfill a vow or as a voluntary offering, the meat must be eaten on the same day the sacrifice is offered. But whatever is left over may be eaten on the second day. Any meat left over until the third day must be completely burned up. If any of the meat from the peace offering is eaten on the third day, the person who presented it will not be accepted by the Lord. You will receive no credit for offering it. By then the meat will be contaminated. If you eat it, you will be punished for your sin. Meat that touches anything ceremonially unclean may not be eaten. It must be completely burned up. The rest of the meat may be eaten, but only by people who are ceremonially clean. If you are ceremonially unclean and you eat meat from a peace offering that was presented to the Lord, you will be cut off from the community. If you touch anything that is unclean, whether it is human defilement or an unclean animal or any other unclean detestable thing, and then eat meat from a peace offering presented to the Lord, you will be cut off from the community. THE FORBIDDEN BLOOD AND FAT Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. You must never eat fat, whether from cattle, sheep, or goats. The fat of an animal found dead or torn to pieces by wild animals must never be eaten, though it may be used for any other purpose. Anyone who eats fat from an animal presented as a special gift to the Lord will be cut off from the community. No matter where you live, you must never consume the blood of any bird or animal. Anyone who consumes blood will be cut off from the community. A portion for the priests. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you present a peace offering to the Lord, bring part of it as a gift to the Lord. Present it to the Lord with your own hands as a special gift to the Lord. Bring the fat of the animal together with the breast, and lift up the breast as a special offering to the Lord. Then the priest will burn the fat on the altar, but the breast will belong to Aaron and his descendants. Give the right thigh of your peace offering to the priest as a gift. The right thigh must always be given to the priest who offers the blood and the fat of the peace offering. For I have reserved the breast of the special offering and the right thigh of the sacred offering for the priests. It is the permanent right of Aaron and his descendants to share in the peace offerings brought by the people of Israel. This is their rightful share. The special gifts presented to the Lord have been reserved for Aaron and his descendants from the time they were set apart to serve the Lord as priests. On the day they were anointed, the Lord commanded the Israelites to give these portions to the priests as their permanent share from generation to generation. These are the instructions for the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering, as well as the ordination offering and the peace offering. The Lord gave these instructions to Moses on Mount Sinai when he commanded the Israelites to present their offerings to the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. And that was Leviticus chapter 7 in the New Living Translation from the Version Bible app. Now for my hear journal, first the highlight, Leviticus chapter 7 verses 34 to 38. Verse 34, For I have reserved the breast of the special offering and the right thigh of the sacred offering for the priests. It is the permanent right of Aaron and his descendants to share in the peace offerings brought by the people of Israel. This is their rightful share. The special gifts presented to the Lord have been reserved for Aaron and his descendants from the time they were set apart to serve the Lord as priests. On the day they were anointed, the Lord commanded the Israelites to give these portions to the priests as their permanent share from generation to generation. These are the instructions for the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering, as well as the ordination offering and the peace offering. The Lord gave these instructions to Moses on Mount Sinai when he commanded the Israelites to present their offerings to the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. So, what's my explanation? The Lord provided instructions to Moses for the conduct of all the required offerings, the atonement for various sins. He also made a permanent provision for his priests, Aaron and his descendants. All the people were required to provide offerings just as all the people are expected to provide tithe and offerings today to support God's servants. Reference Webster's 1828 Dictionary defines tithe as tithe, noun, the tenth part of anything, but appropriately the tenth part of the increase annually arising from the profits of land and stock allocated to the clergy for their support. Tithes are personal, predial, or mixed, personal, when accruing from labor, art, trade, and navigation. Predial, when issuing from the earth as hay, wood, and fruit, and mixed when accruing from beasts which are fed from the ground. Tithe, verb, transitive, to levy a tenth part on, to tax to the amount of a tenth, when thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase. Deuteronomy 26.12 he tithed mint and rue, like Luke 11.42. Tithe verb, 
intransitive to pay the tithes. Again, reference Webster's Dictionary, 1828. So, what's the application for us today? Jesus has provided the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. He is also our high priest that provided a once and forever atonement for all the sins of the world for all time. He's also made a provision for the ministers and their workers in the faith. We are all instructed to bring a tithe and offering to support those in ministry and related expenses in doing God's work. The word tithe means a tenth. Reference 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Malachi 3.10 Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, there, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you, and pour down for you a blessing until there's no more need. Luke 6.38 Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with measure you use it will be measured back to you. Proverbs 11.24 One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Acts 20, 35. In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how himself said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. So what's my response? Thank you, Lord, for my salvation. I repent of my sins and I strive to abide in you as you abide in me, to follow you forever, faithfully and obediently to include my giving to your service and to others as you direct. I pray for those that do not know you. Amen. Amen. Now, how about you? Why don't you try some hair journaling? Highlight, explain, apply, respond. You'll be so glad you did. Comment below. What do you think about tithing? And do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If not, read the Gospel of John chapter 3 to learn about His forgiveness. And talk to God about it. Talk to God about your giving. Talk to God about your living. Talk to God about your loving. Seek Him now. God bless.